Welcome to the training for the new production scheduling cloud application. This is the 11th of 12 presentations. In this lesson, we will cover REST services available for production scheduling and explain how they can be used. Let's start with the first topic. This table summarizes the production scheduling root services available. These REST services are a comprehensive set of services that allows you to interact with the application. While there are many root services available, the two main REST services which you will need are production scheduling plans and production scheduling organizations. The details of the REST services will not be covered in this lesson as they contain over a thousand attributes. However, there's a comprehensive SEM REST service documentation available and categorized under supply chain planning. This documentation also contains specific examples to read up on. The production scheduling plans REST service contains all the actions required to interact with the plan. Plans can be created, modified and deleted. In addition, all actions like refresh, solve, or release can be managed via REST service so that you can automate an end-to-end -end process. The solve root service enables schedule adjustments, for example, moving work order operations in a schedule. Many of these services require specific body, uh, payload bodies. Those are detailed in the REST documentation. Within a plan, the child REST services listed here are available, providing access to manage most data elements inside a plan. This can be useful for integration to other systems, for debugging purposes, or simply to support external reporting requirements. Scheduling organization specific data common to all schedules for an organization are contained in the production scheduling organization's REST service. At the root level, the key actions are listed in this table. For example, you can add an inventory organization as scheduling organization, and of course you can remove that organization again. Refreshing a scheduling organization retrieves current DFF and EFF descriptive flex field and extensible flex field data for work definition operations and item attribute groups. This was described in detail during lesson three and four. While REST services will be provided for all scheduling organization data elements, the initial release of production scheduling will include data maintenance UIs only for a subset. For some data elements, it is necessary to use REST services to manage the data. And this will be the case for the following. Flagging an item, I'm sorry, flagging an attribute for highlighting, specifying attribute value colors used for highlighting in the gun chart, maintaining attribute-based changeover rules, resource attribute sequences, and resource groups. Note that resource relationships are currently not used by the application. The specific approach how to use REST services to manage this setup data will not be covered here. There will be a white paper on Oracle Customer Connect that will outline this in detail. Now let's cover some use cases for these REST services. The REST services for production scheduling work in tandem with other SEM REST services. You can upload setup data using almost any data source as entry point, including spreadsheets, flat files, a database, or other legacy systems. You can access schedule data for reporting purposes, and you can automate processes. The production scheduling process, for example, has a few steps that are best performed when users are not using the application. 
refreshing organization data, refreshing the schedule, and solving the schedule are examples. A synchronous process to orchestrate these steps can be created. Please refer to the Oracle Customer Connect REST orchestrating long running processes document for more information. Here is an example that illustrates how using a combination of REST services allows you to achieve a specific task, uploading changeover data in this case. Note that most actions within REST services will require you to access more than one REST service. The implementation details are not included here, but a white paper will be made available on Oracle Customer Connect on how this can be achieved with relative ease. A few considerations to keep in mind are the following. Most modern programming and scripting languages have libraries to manage REST services and their JSON formatted payloads. It is best to choose a programming language that has wide support, is easy to use, and is performant. Python is a good example, but other tools with REST libraries will work as well. Also note that you should leverage batch requests when managing many records. Please refer to scaling REST services using batch requests on Oracle Customer Connect. And here's an example that uses REST services to automate processes that can run overnight so that a schedule will be ready at the start of the workday. REST services are asynchronous by nature, but automated workflows are often synchronous. In order to emulate a synchronous process, the prior process needs to complete successfully before the next one can start. You can use REST service ERP integrations to pull the process for successful completion. For more information, please refer to Oracle Customer Connect REST orchestrating long running processes. To summarize, in this lesson, we learned which REST services are available for production scheduling, the actions that specific REST services can perform, and which use cases can be addressed with those.